This video is about electrolytes. So when we are finished with this video, you should be able to tell if something is an electrolyte or if it is not an electrolyte. And you're going to understand why things are electrolytes. All right. So first of all, what is an electrolyte? Well, an electrolyte is something that has ions that are in solution. And that's key. You need to have ions. So positively and negatively charged ions have to be floating around in solution. And because ions are floating in solution, this solution will conduct an electric current, and so we call it an electrolyte. All right, so first of all, what types of substances are electrolytes? Well, you need ions in solution, so it makes sense that ionic compounds dissolved in water would be an electrolyte, and they are. So ionic compounds dissolved in water are electrolytes. Now, something that is molten, an ionic solid that is melted, so the ions now are, are moving um, in that crystal lattice, so the ions are moving because we are trying to transition from a solid into a liquid, molten ionic compounds are also electrolytes. And then solutions of acids or bases are also electrolytes. And we're going to have an acid-base unit later, but we'll talk enough about them um, in in this video so that you'll be able to know um, if an acid or a base is a weak electrolyte or a strong electrolyte. And that is my cat who is trying um, to, to photobomb here. Okay, so anyway, what is not an electrolyte? Okay, molecular substances even if they're in solution. So things that are covalently bonded, things that are non-metals only, no matter what, if you dissolve them in water, you are not going to have ions in solution. And so they're not electrolytes. And solids, no matter if it's an ionic solid or a molecular solid, solids are not electrolytes. And the reason that they are not electrolytes is because the ions are not moving in solution. They're just stuck in the crystal lattice. So. Anyway, so how do you test if something is an electrolyte or not? Well, you have these conductivity meters, and um, here it's represented with um, a light bulb. And if the light bulb turns on, the ions are completing a circuit, and so therefore the um, light bulb would turn on. So in our first picture here, we have um, ethanol. And ethanol is made of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. It's CH. 3CH2OH. There's no metal there at all. It's what we would say it's covalently bonded and it has no metal and so it's a molecular compound dissolved in water. There are no ions whatsoever in solution and so it is a non-electrolyte. Notice the light bulb didn't turn on. Um, potassium chloride is a strong electrolyte and we say that it has a high conductivity. See how the light bulb is bright yellow here? Because the potassium and the chloride break apart in water to form the positive potassium ions and the negative chloride ions completes the circuit and therefore it is a um, it is a strong electrolyte. And finally, in our last speaker here, and a little bit of it got cut off, it's acetic acid solution. And so we said that acids are electrolytes. It just so happens that acetic acid is a weak acid, and we're going to talk about that. Um, and so it is a um, weak electrolyte. Okay, so what's our big idea? What do you really need to remember about electrolytes? You got to have ions in solution to be an electrolyte. Okay, now, um, here is kind of um, a cartoon. This is water right here. The red is the oxygen, and the two white things here are the hydrogens. The hydrogens are partially positively charged. They're attracted to the negative ion, so here the chloride ion and potassium chloride. And then what it does is, see here, it pulls it away from the crystal lattice. Um, and so now we've got ions floating in solution when we've got the water there. The purple potassium ion is positively charged and see that oxygen there? It's slightly negatively charged on the water, and it will pull apart um, the potassium ion from the chloride ions. And now, again, this is how ionic solids become electrolytes when they are dissolved in water.
So what is the water doing? Well, the partial positive charge on the hydrogen that's in the water is attracted to the negative ion in the ionic solid. The partial negative charge on the oxygen, which is in the water, is attracted to the positive ion in the ionic solid. And then you're pulling these things apart in solution, and then you have an electrolyte. So here's a nice video um, that shows this. So let's go ahead and um, watch this video. Sodium chloride crystals are held together by attractive forces between the positively charged sodium and negatively charged chloride ions. When a crystal of sodium chloride is placed into water, the hydrogen ends of polar water molecules attract the negatively charged chloride ions and gradually surround them. Likewise, the oxygen ends of water molecules are attracted to and surround the positively charged sodium ions. The hydrated ions drift away into the solution, allowing new water molecules to surround newly exposed ions. Gradually, the entire crystal dissociates into solution. Okay. So there we have it. Oh, we don't need to hear it again. Here we go. All right. So what type of substances are electrolytes? We've already um, talked about this at the very beginning. We said ionic compounds dissolved in water, and we just saw that video showing how the water pulls the ions apart. Molten ionic solids, I don't have a video of that, but you can imagine like the, the ions starting to vibrate more as the temperature goes up, and then they're getting separated um, in the molten state and having ions. Um, and then solutions of acids and bases. Okay, well let's talk about acids and bases. Acids and bases can be classified as weak or strong. And when we do the acid base unit, we're going to talk about why that is, and, and you're going to have to learn ones that are weak and ones that are strong. But for now, we need to know that weak acids and weak bases are weak electrolytes. So we'll either tell you that it's a weak acid or a weak base, or you would see the light bulb only light up a little bit. Now the reason these are weak electrolytes is, well, they have fewer ions in solution, and so that's why the light bulb doesn't light up as bright. Strong acids and strong bases are strong electrolytes. They produce a lot of ions in solution, just like an ionic compound does. Okay, so um, they can also tell you something about if something's an acid or a base by pH. And if something has a pH below 7, we call it or classify it as an acid. And if something has a pH above 7, it's classified as a base. Okay, so what ions are in solution for acids and bases? So if you've got an acid, so you've got something um, with a pH below 7, they will produce H plus ions in solution. That's the definition or one definition of an acid. Bases will produce the hydroxide or the OH minus ions in solution. So those are the ions in acids and bases that are causing um, solutions to be electrolytes. Okay, non-electrolytes, no ions in solution, and these are all molecular compounds. There's no metal at all. It's not an acid um, with that H out front. Um, again, we're going to let you know if something is an acid right now until we do that acid-base unit. But molecular compounds, no ions, therefore it's not an electrolyte. So this is the type of question you'd be asked. Okay, let's determine if the following are electrolytes. The first is an aqueous solution of potassium chloride. That would be a strong electrolyte because that aqueous means the water has pulled the potassium ion away from the chloride ion, and we have ions freely floating in solution. Now this is tricky. Notice the potassium chloride with the S. It's a solid. Yes, it's an ionic compound, but the ions are not separated from one another, so it would be a non electrolyte. But if it's molten, KCl, potassium chloride, would be an electrolyte. This is methanol. There is no metal here at all. It's a molecular compound, non-electrolyte. Now we would tell you this is hydrochloric acid. We would tell you the name of it, the word acid, or we could say that a pH is below 7, and oh, that would be, and it is a strong acid, this would be an electrolyte. Because it's um, a strong acid, and we'd let you know that, it would be a strong electrolyte. This is acetic acid. Um, 
again, an aqueous solution of it. It happens to be a weak acid, so it would be a weak electrolyte. And here we have sodium hydroxide. Again, it, you could think of it as an ionic compound, um, but also it makes those hydroxide ions in solution, so it is a strong base, and it would be a strong electrolyte. All right, so I hope that helps, um, and we're going to do activities with these, and it's pretty fun. Thanks for